What's up, kid? What up, what up, what up? Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Knowing Pot Podcast, a.k.a. Kip. <laughs> <laughs> our, our Bible study podcast, our Christian podcast. <laughs> Ralph's tired and he's yawning. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, long day? Long day, Ralph? L- long day. <laughs> Super long day. Super long week. <laughs> So this is our wrap-up episode. Um, we just went through the book of Jonah past few weeks. Uh, you know, we like to come together and just discuss it real quick, you know, how it spoke to us, and just share. Mm. Thank right. you for taking this journey through Jonah with us. Yeah, man. Appreciate you guys, man. Yes. Definitely. Um... Yo, B, I understand Jonah, B. Mm. Going into j- this, I've been through Jonah already. Like we went through, <laughs> we went through Jonah with Pastor Richie in the um, the the the, the college course, and that was a blessing because you know Pastor Richie, he's he's a teacher, and I got a lot from that. But going through it again just by myself, like, and kind of having like the Holy Spirit as my teacher, mm-hmm. you know, it was different and um just so many things jumped out to me, you know, but just, just, you know, before the last episode, with chapter four, the Holy Spirit, like, was just dealing with me, like, yo, bro, you, you, you was Jonah, man, like, that's why I kind of, I felt like that's why he kind of left it with that question mark, like, you know, whoever in your life that you have a problem forgiving, I think that's the biggest thing with, with, with unbelievers and believers, you know, you have a believer who, you know, he's strong in the Lord. You you could be doing a lot of things for the Lord. You know, you could be serving, but there's always that unforgiveness. You know, you always have somebody in your life. And I think relationships is just so difficult to navigate through. You know, relationships is the center of our life. You know, our relationship with God is number one. But then what comes second is the relationship we have with one another. And that's what the, the, the Lord said. You know, you with those two, you can hang the whole law on, you know, the love that you have for, um, you know, love the, love the Lord, your God, with all your heart, your mind, your soul, and love your neighbor, you know, as yourself. And, you know, this, everything that we, we are, it, it, it revolves around relationships. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? So you, the, the, um, the, the vertical could be good, you know, you and God, but that ho- horizontal, there's always a problem there. You know, and it, and right now you could be in a situation where it could be a coworker, it could be a neighbor, it could be anybody, it could be you know, a political party. There's there's something where you have a problem with somebody else, yeah. and when the when the Lord God extends that mercy and that grace upon them, are you gonna have the same heart? Are you gonna agree with God? Because that's what Jonah' problem was. The Lord heart towards the Ninevites was grace, mercy, I'm going to save them. He didn't want to agree with God. He didn't want to get on the same page as God. You know, and are you going to get on the same page as God? Because if judgment was there, you would have been front and center. Sword would have been in hand. You would have been, you heard up, you would have been pulling the lever for the guillotine on the Assyrians. (laughs) Right? Right. If it was judgment, but when it came to grace and mercy, he was like, nah, I'm not going to get on board. And that revealed who he is, and it reveals who we are. If the Lord extends mercy and grace on somebody's life where you see their life changing, you see them saved, just because you knew them in the past or what they've done to you, are you going to extend that same in grace and mercy? Or are you going to love them like the Lord loved them? And I think that's the struggle we have as people is the horizontal. There's always a problem with somebody. We always got a problem with somebody. So I'm, I'm hearing like, the heart of God, um, God revealing himself in that book, it being the same, right? Like we read back in Genesis 12, 3, what, what he told Moses, like the whole plan, right? Um, him revealing his heart towards a group of people that um, Jonah didn't agree with or didn't like, he hated. So God's heart revealing our hearts, Jonah's heart. Mm-hmm. And I guess the the sanctification part would be us aligning, seeing these things, right? The light of God shining 
shining on mm-hmm. these areas in our lives that needs attention, needs mm-hmm. to get worked on, um, and you know, aligning our hearts with God's. And if obviously it's the work of the Holy Spirit, so the beginning of that is is confessing it mm-hmm. and asking for help. You know what I'm saying? So one thing I want to bring out is that I noticed this time reading it is the Lord used Jonah despite his reluctant to see the Ninevites get saved. Yeah. Like he still mm-hmm. did it. He didn't mm-hmm. agree with it, but he still went out and did it. <laughs> and that's in, that was interesting to me. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was, yeah. That was something else that... That stood out. So my question is, so he I want, went. I want to say it right. He went through the motion. Right. That's what I want to yeah. say. Like, is going through the motions? Does that count? Would that count for Jonah? Because he was obedient. It wasn't like he was being disobedient. He so, was obedient, but his heart wasn't in it. Right. So at first, he was disobedient. And obviously, the Lord chasing him mm-hmm. to get him to the point where he was obedient because he realized, all right, he realized who God is. Okay. Right, right. And you all almost right. killed me, man. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, God, you ready to kill me for this, yeah, man? Yeah, <laughs> like, I'm not going to win this fight with you, God. Right, right. I'm going to do what you told me to do, mm-hmm. but he still did not agree with it. Yeah. So, is that going to, so the work that he put in here, is that going to be Haywood Stubble? <sighs> That's, that's my question. That's the question. When I read it last week, that's what I was thinking. I was I like, yo, this guy question. was reluctant the whole time. Does it count? Because it's the heart behind what you do, right? right? Like if you're doing, if you're preaching the word so that you can <laughs> have a million followers on social media, or are you preaching the word so that you can save people for the Lord? You know what I mean? Like I, I, went, I went and put it like that with Jonah. It was... It's like the Lord telling you to do something. Right. Right, and at first you're like, I don't want to do it. Right, he throws the win at you, right, and then you say, okay, I'm gonna do it, but I don't agree with you. Right. So I'm doing it reluctantly. I'm not doing it, and with my heart is still like Jonah's heart still wasn't aligned to God's heart with that, but he still did it, and the Lord still used that to right. yeah, the Lord, to, to bless the people. I got I got a scripture verse for that. Um, Philippians 1.15 says, Some indeed preach Christ even from envy and strife, mm. and some also from goodwill. The former preach Christ from selfish ambition, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my chains, but the latter out of love, knowing that I am appointed for the defense of the gospel. What then? Only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached, and in this I rejoice. <laughs> so explain that. Yeah. So I mean, he's like, yeah, you may be doing it out of pretense, out of lies, but he's like, but Paul's saying, yo, I don't care. Christ is being preached, right? Whether it's out of selfish ambition, whether it is for whatever means strife, he's like, Christ is being preached. Yeah. So and the reason that's important is because God's gonna use it regardless. That's right. right. Yeah, we know whether, that. Whether or not you get. Um, you know, whether or not the Lord gives you so, something for it right. when we step into eternity is the question. That yeah, I that's what. That's yeah. what. Like, yeah, you know? it's, yeah, it's more. Yeah, nothing. how does the Lord look at it towards you? So, yeah, it's so probably I, wood hand stubble. That's yes. what I would. So I see on. it as like that that Nineveh revival. Mm-hmm. That was the power of God. Yes, all right? day. Yeah. Completely the power of God, despite of the person. And we saw that on the ship, Mm -hmm. right? And we saw that. And then, and this guy, he was reluctant. So imagine, you know, when you're not, you don't feel like doing something. That's what I'm saying. Imagine how he was preaching. He was probably, you know, and obviously I'm totally speculating, but he had that attitude on him. And we saw that even afterwards. Yo, kill me. You saw how he threw this tantrum. He just wasn't with it, yeah. so I'm sure that showed in how he he he, he proclaimed yeah. that message. He proclaimed what the Lord told him, but there was an attitude behind it because he wasn't with it. But the Lord still used it, and that's the, and that's the thing. I just you know, 
I think it's always pointing back to who God is. And I think that's the whole thing. I think that's the message of the book. Like, oh, you know yeah, what? no matter what, God is merciful and gracious. And, you know, whether you're obedient or disobedient, God. <laughs> or if you're obedient yeah. and disobedience. Me, right. Or if you're obedient. Okay. So yeah, I, know, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. <laughs> You see how you gotta yeah. say it right. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta <laughs> say it right. O- obedience. So his heart wasn't there. Right. Yeah. But he went through the motions, knowing God. Mm-hmm. Like I see somebody that did not agree. So in order for me to apply it to myself, there's things that God is gonna tell me, and I'm not gonna want to do it. I'm not gonna agree. I'm not gonna be with it. But he might put me in a situation like. That's what I'm saying. And yeah, then and I, I still do it. Right. Reluctantly, with a mm. reluctant heart. Right. And the Lord is still glorified in it. Yes. Mm. So again, and I'm looking at it like, <clears throat> actually, I think that process, and I, you mentioned it last week, Ralph, where Jonah did write the book. Mm. So that exercise, right? Maybe him actually doing it is that one step of faith in that direction. Hmm. So I think about it like I'm not a father, but you think about like a father who tells his kid, go clean the room, and he doesn't want to do it, Mm -hmm. but he still does it. And the dad afterward is like, come on, we're going to go get some ice cream. We're going to go like, the father still is going to bless that child for doing it, even though his heart wasn't there. And part of me is thinking, you know, because of the fact, because he could have continued to be disobedient to death, Mm -hmm. but he wasn't. You know, he, he eventually he was like, all right, I'm going to do it. Yeah. And we don't really know his heart between almost dying and then seeing the Lord, the Lord's um, anger relents. Right. We don't really know his heart through that? that. I don't hear that. I don't hear that. <laughs> <laughs> right. So yeah, what's wrong with this guy? Be, between the the time of, of him almost dying and then, you know, the Lord spitting him out through the through the fish and then. Where we see his anger, we don't we don't know his heart between that, right? What do you mean? When he's walking through the city, saying his repent. Heart, when you, his heart towards what? Towards towards the Lord, towards his obedience, right? We don't see his heart towards that. Toward, so what I'm trying to say is, while he was doing the work that God wanted him to do, he could have been doing it with a heart that was was still obedient and, and, and not reluctant. Is what I'm saying. No, I think he was mm-hmm. obedient. Right. Yeah, but he wasn't. But that, it's it's kind of like that's why I always separate. the The problem was this, you know, this unhealthy national pride, racism. That was the problem. But what I'm saying is, not until he saw it happening, where the Lord was showing mercy, maybe that could have renewed that anger. Uh, I, the reason I say he was like that throughout the whole time because that's how the story started. No, no, I get that. But what I'm saying, is, I don't but, think he changed at no, all. No, no. But in in the fish, there was something changed, what, was, right? Something changed, which is why he wrote that whole chapter too. That that poet, that poem about no, but Thanksgiving. I, I mentioned it in you know last week or the week before. It was Thanksgiving, so he was glad that God saved him. So exactly. it had nothing to do with. The Ninevites. His prayer had nothing to do with the mm-hmm. Ninevites. He didn't even mention the Ninevites. And I, he didn't n- mention the commission that the Lord sent him on. He didn't say nothing about that. No, no. But he knew why he almost died. Yes. And, right? Yeah. So the fact God was saving him because his heart repented. Right? Don't you think no. he had a repentant, repentant no. heart at that not, time? Not towards that issue. I think it was the whole situation. You know why? Because he said, I told, told you. you. No, no, that's because what I'm saying is I think seeing it happen might have reignited uh, that initial disobedience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no. I, I know what you're saying. I think he was always like that, and he never changed. And the crazy thing is we the story ends kind of like with us not knowing that part. I mean, it ends, how, just, it, it ends how it started. Exactly. Right. Yeah, right. you know what I'm saying same... with the same heart. But what I'm saying is, at some point, I don't. That's what we, I we have. We have that near death experience where he's like, "All right, Lord, I didn't want to be in your presence, but now please help me because I need your presence." I feel like something happened to him in that point, and the same thing like with, with us as Christians, we go through seasons where we're like, "All right, God, you're right," but then something happens where it brings us back to where we 
initially were. So all I'm saying is we don't know for sure where his heart was when he was walking through Nineveh preaching. We know he was obedient to what God told him, and there could have been a little bit of a change at that moment. But seeing the Lord's mercy might have reignited that hatred towards them is what I'm trying to... I'm trying to give the dude a little bit of grace. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> he got enough from the Lord. He got saved from the bottom of the yeah, yeah, ocean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but again, it's it's this progressive um, knowledge of God, learning about God, and dying to self. You know what I'm saying? And he had he had extensive knowledge of God, but his self will was so strong. Yep. Like this guy was stubborn. He was willful. And when it came to that particular, you know, that particular thing, he was not relent. He would not relent. Like he was hardcore till the end. And I, you know, I agree. I, I believe obviously, you know, he possibly could have changed. I believe he did. No, I believe Because the Lord will keep working on you. Or you'll die. He'll call you like, all right, man. <laughs> he'll come through. Come home, man. I'm, Before it gets worse. Like, your fam, you just causing chaos out here. <laughs> come up. You'll get it up here. Yeah. But, you know. I, I love the whole part of the book where, like, what Ralph was just saying. It's like, but God. You know, like, he's going to do what he wants to do regardless of, of us. And, you know, I do, when I, when I pray sometimes, I'm like, Lord, use me despite me. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, despite up, yeah. The, yeah. the stupidity that I, that, I, that I bring to the table, <laughs> use me. Because mm. my heart is for souls. My heart mm. is to see people love the Lord the way, to feel the, his love the way I feel it. But I know I'm a sinner, and I know that I mess up. And, and this is what I see here in this book is that you have the entire book is long suffering of the Lord to the point where it got to the point where he was like, yo, this long suffering is about to run out, mm -hmm. you know, repent, repent, repent. And then he uses, you know, a human, right, an imperfect human being for, to, to get his point across so that he can save people. And that I love it. And I love it because when I read scriptures and I, when I read David, when I read about these individuals, Abraham who are imperfect, but the Lord still uses them to get their point across. I don't see the the scripture as something reading about David's life and saying, I shouldn't do that. When I read the scriptures, I see, look what God did despite that person. Mm -hmm. And that makes me love God even more. Mm -hmm. Right. And don't get me wrong. No, we shouldn't do <laughs> what these individuals did. But I look at the big picture, like God is going to be God and he is going to save regardless. So a lesson is hmm. get out your feelings. <laughs> That's why I always be correcting myself, man. Do follow what the Lord says. Get out your feelings. feelings you might, dog. And the thing is, obviously, Jonah didn't understand. He didn't have a deep understanding of God's universal love. Mm -hmm. He had it. He had an understanding of it towards him and his people. But that's not universal. That's exclusive. Right? So... I think he did have an understanding of his universal love. No. Nah. Which is why he didn't want to do it. Mm -hmm. Because he knew that the Lord was going to save them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but he wasn't with it. Right. Mean, no, he wasn't with it, but he had yeah. an understanding. He knew that yeah, the Lord yeah. would save yeah. them. Which is why... He, if he if he, if he he thought the Lord was only going to save Israel, he, he would have went, all right, Lord, I'll go do it. No, so, so he had the knowledge of it. The right. head knowledge... But in his heart, he only wanted him. So that's what I meant. Like he understood it. He understood it uh, knowledge wise, knowledge right. or rationally. Right. But the heart of it and him being able to. He wasn't in agreement. Him being able to look at others through that. Right. He didn't do that. He only looked at that through to see his people. Yeah. yeah but yeah. he wouldn't apply that to other people. Yeah. So because he was yeah. in his feelings. And you know, I I also think that um that. Not only when we talked about him being a typology of Christ for that moment of, you know, the three days and three nights or whatever, but I also see him as a typology of just Israel altogether. Because, right. yeah. you know, 
Israel was chosen by God. And you mentioned that in the prior episode, Israel was chosen by God and, and they were commissioned by God to be a light to the Gentiles, to show his love through the entire world. And that was their purpose in their commission. Then we saw their rebellion of not wanting to do that. Their selfish nationalistic pride that is only for them. Mm -hmm. Um, and we see all that rebellion and um, their disobedience until, you know, we see in, you know, the book of Romans and Paul being an apostle to the Gentiles. And finally, you know, after the cross that you see some of this. But even you look at it today, you still see that same nationalistic pride. And the funny thing is, do you know that um, that the, that on Yom Kippur, this is the book that the Jews read? Jonah. Jonah. Mm. <laughs> on Yom Kippur for you know because that's the day that, that day of atonement and repentance and the greatest repentance that ever took place was with Nineveh wow so they read this book but mm. then they still deal <laughs> you know what I'm saying it's, it's amazing to still and, see right. that that pride is still there and not only that blindness in part yeah. nationally nationally blindness has fallen on the nation of Israel until the time of the Gentiles, Gentiles. So, not saying that you wouldn't evangelize or you wouldn't share the gospel with a Jewish person, but yeah. if you're looking at it nationally, like they're going through something right now. They're on that time out where the blindness is on them as a nation. Yeah, the Lord, like that's specifically from the Lord, he says, right? Yeah. Yeah. But what does it say about uh, us making them jealous? Um, so, like, like when we went through yeah. it in Romans, Romans, Paul is like, so it's kind of like how the Gentile nations we're supposed to look at Israel and then be like, oh, your God is blessing you. I want to be down with your God. Yeah. Like, I want to reap the benefits, the blessings, the security from your God. And you're supposed to kind of entice them to come mm -hmm. and follow Israel. Right. So he's like, now it's kind of reversed where, you know, the gospel has gone to the Gentiles. They're accepting it like the Ninevites. Be like, you what? Jesus Christ died for your sins. Be like, okay. Mm. I accept it. So now, through us, right? And you even think about the commission that Jesus Christ go out and make disciples of men. Like, we're supposed to, the way we live our lives, we're supposed to shine our light so that people that are not saved, including the nation of Israel, should look and be like, man, why are you so happy? Why are you so joyous? I want that. You have a light. You have something about you. Oh, it's Jesus Christ. So they get jealous. Oh, damn, we had that. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And we could now still get back into it. So that's I think that's what Paul was. Yeah, like and that's what I was thinking, but then like when we we talk about like his whole like the blindness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. They can't technically be now, jealous I, if if the Lord has given them that blindness to not see it. Yeah. You know but, what I mean? So that's why it's just a little bit on the No, no, but I look mm -hmm. at it like it's a national like it's a national blind. Yeah, yeah, but I, I agree. You with have the a lot of, Israel, of right? you have a lot of Jews for Jesus that do yeah. give their hearts to the Lord. Yeah, so saved. maybe it was those mm -hmm. that he was referring to. You know, but you know, as a, as a nation, as a people, they they don't believe. You know yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so, it, and so it, it's like, okay, so let's say you you fighting with somebody, and the spirit tells you, "Yo, go apologize." I don't want to go apologize. You know, let's say husband and wife, brother and sister, whatever. Oh, go apologize. No, nah, I don't want to go apologize. And then you go and apologize, but your heart is not in it. <laughs> Does it count? <laughs> that's how I'm looking at it. That's why I'm. That's why I'm fighting with it because I would think that would count. I, I, I thinking about it, I agree with you because you doing that takes a level of humility. That's yeah. what I'm. That's 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 the that's that's my that's where my my fight is with this. Like, he was reluctant the whole time. He was mad the whole time, but he went and did it. Yeah. You know, he went and did it. And it's like, that's how I that's how I look at it. Like, if you got to go apologize to somebody that you you you, you hurt, yeah. you know, or you got a problem with, and you don't want to do it. It's it just taking mm -hmm. everything out of you. Like, I don't want to do it, but the Spirit's telling you to do it, and you go and do it. You know, it could be a dry, a dry apology, whatever. It's not, it's not hot. You know, it's not full with the heart, but it's like, yo, I did it because the spirit told me to do it. Yeah, it's like a step. Yeah, and yeah. I feel like, you know, it might not, 
And that's my problem because I know that the heart is not in it all the way, but you are being obedient to what the spirit is telling you to do. You know yeah. what I mean? Just like the scripture just tells you, he says, draw near to me and I will draw near unto you. Right. right. So that's that's how I'm feeling yeah. about this. And that's why I think at the end, he finally does see it God's way because he was obedient. Yeah. And I think eventually, you know, if he was just totally disobedient the whole time, then I'm like, you're not even trying to work with it. And I think that's why God worked with him. Right. Even in chapter four. Even after you know what I'm saying? Because he's like, yo, okay, you're obedient. Now I'm going to walk you down to why I did what I did. Because right. it's like, I was telling this to Ralph. I'm like, with, like, with Abraham, it was pre-judgment. He worked it out with Abraham about, you know, um, you know his grace, you know, being righteous. I'm not going to destroy the righteous with the wicked. With Jonah, it was post-salvation. Like, he didn't break anything down to Jonah. He was just like, go do it. Jonah knew who he was and all of that, but he didn't go through the emotions with Jonah. He was just like, go do it. Jonah's like, no. And then he was like, oh, word? Works, works. Storm. Yo, shit. Crazy. Get thrown overboard. Like, he he was like, ah. And then it's crazy because it says the word came to him again. Now he's like, all right, Jonah, go do it. That's it. I don't got to break it down to you. Just go do it. And then when Jonah finally was obedient to it, then the Lord was like, all right, chapter four, let me... Let me deal with you. Why are you like that? Why are you angry? Why are you such and such? You know what I'm saying? So it's like... Is it, is it, would you... The way the Lord was dealing with him, would you compare that to Job? Mm. Posing these questions to pull out... To yeah. pull out these yeah. right. dark spots in you yeah. that need to get exposed so that the Lord can right. deal with it. But yeah, it's, it's all post... What, what the Lord did. It's post what the Lord is doing. But the Lord still deals with him. And that's why I'm yeah. like, I think it's because of his obedience. Right. Yeah, his heart wasn't right, but the Lord was like, okay, you obedient? I'm like, well, I'm going to work with you. Let's work on your heart now. Right. You know what I'm saying? And so, sorry, go ahead, Ron. No, I was just going to say, this is which is in direct contradistinction with um, when God was dealing with Cain. Right. That, you know, that's that Cain is another opposite. one. He came to him and started dealing with him. He's like, yo, let's have this conversation. Before you go in. Before you go yes. over the edge. Yeah. So I could get you to a point of obedience and then I could work. On this hatred that you have for your brother, but King right. was like, nah, right, you know. And then you see, you know, the the difference where you know the lack of repentance, then lack of, you know, because he just went away. So yeah. I'm seeing something where, right, we open up the book where the Lord told him something, and he was trying to flee from the presence of the Lord. Mm -hmm. If you're fleeing from the presence of the Lord, he can't deal with you. Mm. Right. Okay, I see what you're saying. Right, right, like, right. Like, right. how are we going to have a conversation? Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah. When he finally came in obedience, although he did not agree with what the Lord wanted to do, mm. he was still doing it, and he was I, in a oh, place where... I see what you're saying. Yeah. You you're don't right. understand it. You're right. You don't like it. You're, you're in right. your feelings, but you're I could right. now I could still deal with you're it. Right. You're right. So to me, I'm getting it like there are things that the Lord might impressing our hearts to do that we don't like or we don't agree with. Mm -hmm. But if we take that step of faith, right. not yeah. understanding it, right. not feeling good about it, at least you're there so he could deal with you. He can't deal with you if you're trying to go right, to the Right, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And this right, is right. why yeah, I was right. telling you absolutely at the right, time yeah. of while he was walking through Nineveh, I feel like there may have been something changing in his heart. Because yeah, what you just described, like the Lord mm. used that. He was working at that time in his heart. And that's why I'm saying mm. like that entire time, I, I I don't think he was, I hate Nineveh, but repent. I hate Nineveh, but repent. I feel like me, the Lord was working in him. No, And I, I, that's just the part I don't agree with. Yeah, I don't agree with that. Because I think. I think it was just pure the obedience. The part that he repented on was a stupid idea that I could, I could flee from the presence of God. Because <laughs> right. he says certain things in his prayer, like your dog. Right. You were still there when I was in the lowest, darkest point. Mm -hmm. So he says that, so now he's remembering, oh, you're omnipresent. There's no way I could go. See, and but, he was also thankful. But, but, you're, but you're disconnecting that, what, where he was, from the reason why he got there. And saying, you know what I mean? Like, if you was... Smashing, smashing, smashing. <laughs> then one day you found yourself in a place where you, you needed the Lord to heal you from a disease and the Lord healed you. Like, you know why you had that disease. You know why the Lord had to come and rescue you. 
and repenting at that moment but that encompasses everything but that doesn't Leading mean there. no that doesn't mean he stopped hating right the no, no, that's I'm what not i'm saying there was a complete love for and, and, and as the reason i'm saying that is cuz of what he said yeah chapter 4 you see i told you yep. that, that his attitude to me didn't change didn't change yeah the fact that he did it so that's the question i'm asking we're seeing somebody do something that they still don't agree with and the lord still used it that's right, my point right so you mm -hmm. but yeah i mean we've been saying that but so you think there was still complete hatred in his heart yeah yes. he said yeah. that's why it, verse 4 he says wow. but it displeased jonah exceedingly and he became he angry he what he displeased knew them that the fact that they that, were saved. that they were saved. exactly right yeah. right yeah so so he didn't want he didn't want that and the Lord is so like, no, why, why, so you why wasn't he in a rage while he was walking through Nineveh? Because again, I think at that moment, and like you said, he was fleeing from God. That the 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 everything that was happening to him is because he was trying to get away from the presence of God. Right? No, I think it was because he was being disobedient. No, he was being disobedient, but the point is, is like, you know, he was it says it. He was trying to get away from the presence of God. And the thing about it is when you when you read his prayer, his whole prayer was I'm going to look towards your holy temple. Like, now nah, I want your presence. Because he was in dire straits. Like, he was mm -hmm. done. He was he he realized, like, I can't, like you said, I can't run away from you, God. You're everywhere. That was the stupidest move I tried to do. Look, I almost died yeah, doing it. Yeah, Thank I mean, you for that saving was, that was me. The that was the repentance. He's like, sorry I dumbed down. Sorry I dumbed down and thought I could <laughs> get, away away get away from you. <laughs> right. That was what he That's repented. what he that's repented all, for. Yeah. He when repented. it came to Nineveh? Nineveh? Nah. He was like, this is where I stand. And I think chapter four lets you know his position there never changed to the point yeah. where even the book ends where we don't know. Like, yeah. We was left mm -hmm. with his position the, not being changed. And the Lord is like, yo, fam, why are you angry? And he did a whole exercise using right. the plant. Right. And then he's like, fam, he's trying to deal with him. See, but this is I, the reason why when he sees the repentance, what does he say there? No, I, he says I there, it would be better for me to, to die. To die. Yeah. Right. So this if he bitterness. was on the bottom of the ocean, still thinking that, then he should have been like, "I'm okay with dying," right? Because he, I don't want to. No, he said it because if you read chapter four, that's why he kept, "Yo, you might just kill me." I'd rather die. I'd rather exactly. Die. He went right back to that. But, but his saved. heart was not there when he was at the bottom of the ocean. Yeah, because he was in danger. Exactly. Right. That's right. that's that that's the only reason that had nothing to do with Nineveh. We don't we don't yeah. know that. And the reason we know. Cause we have his heart and his thoughts and his prayers. Yeah, I say, chapter four. The, I, I see that, but what? I, all right. So I you're mean, adding. The point is, you're adding that Nineveh was in there and he right. was repenting. I'm thinking for his that there was repentance at, at the bottom of the ocean for everything leading up to that point, no. which was his disobedience to the Lord and why he was being disobedient nah. because nah, of that nah, hatred. No, 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 no. It's see. the why part. Yeah. So right. Nineveh was. I don't believe Nineveh was involved. It's like because of that. Because of chapter four. It's like, okay, so I'll give you a perfect example. Let's say you, you're doing a hate crime. You get busted. You're going to jail. All right, you're at court. you praying. Yo, everybody pray for me. Yo, I don't, get, I don't get locked up. They're giving you 20 years for this hate crime, whatever you did. Yo, pray, pray, pray. You fasting. You praying. You all in. Yeah. You get to court. All right, man, you ain't got to do no time. You totally innocent. That don't have no, You still hate those people. <laughs> You not you not you didn't pray yeah. because you mad because you sh you you did that hate crime. You prayed to get out of the jail situation. Mm. You was in jail like you was facing twenty years, and the whole reason you was going so hard. Everybody prayed for me. You was fasting because you didn't want to go to jail. I get that part, but, but then but that don't just real quick. That don't have nothing to. Do, but you still hate those people. As soon as you got out of jail, you went right back to the the hate meeting. Yo, what we gonna do next? <laughs> <laughs> that's no. how it look you no, understand no. what I'm saying yeah. it's like yeah fam but the, that person was, yeah. that was about to be locked up then God tells them to go preach to the to the people that you did the hate crime to right this is, and then he goes and he does it right but that right? didn't change but that the didn't fact that he still hate them hate that's them the right making, yeah. that's why I said that, that's yeah. the point that he was obedient and that's my thing. You're being obedient, but your heart, your heart is, is still not, that's yeah. totally that was not, not that was the question your heart is not in it I mean listen I see what you guys are saying you know what I mean? But he's all trying to say, he's trying to. Yeah, nah, 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 nah. You know why? Because Ange, Ange can't. You know what it is? Ange can't separate 
you just too real, man. You can't separate you doing something and your heart not in it. Because everything you do, your heart is in it. That's the kind of guy you are. So for you to fathom somebody doing something and their heart not in it, you like, how could you even? (laughs) That can't even happen. I get that part. But what I'm saying is when I see this dude repent... Of what? Of, of what? Of what? I, of everything that no. got out there, bro. No. That's putting everything That's the, in yeah. it. But you don't. You making no. it seem like he, like he you know us. for sure. He tells he us tells what he us. repented oh, for. No. <laughs> he said, "Yo, I'm about to die. You <laughs> saved me from read death. The read yes, number two. Read I, the yo, listen, I, we read the prayer. All I'm Nineveh saying has is, nothing to do with it. He yeah. walked. So all I'm saying is that when he was walking through Nineveh, right, preaching, he was just being right? obedient. When the when the Lord, he was being obedient. Of course, he was. That's it. But I hate I you, but I hate you though. Yo, Nineveh, but, 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 but listen, why would judgment he be is obedient? coming in forty days? But I hate you. So, but what, I hope it but don't what come. Happens, but what happens when he says, "I would rather die than see Nineveh"? So then, all I'm saying is, why would he go ahead and be obedient? Because the Lord told me if there wasn't a little bit of a change in his heart. No, because he almost right. died yeah. by not being obedient. Yeah. He saw it's, that the Lord almost killed him. The Lord almost killed. He was like, "You'll be almost." You know, when I'm That's, disobedient, this dude God would almost... rather die than see Nineveh. So that... why wouldn't he just stay at the bottom of that ocean? Because death. If there was not some sort of change in his heart, because because the... he knew why he was in the ocean was because he hated Nineveh. But Ange, we... so why not just be like, "All right, I'm done." Because we I agree. Still hate we hate Nineveh. Listen, we agree that there was a change in his heart, but it wasn't towards Nineveh. It was towards God. It was towards. Yeah, it was towards it's his, towards his God. Right. It's right. obedience listen, to God. It. Right. I see right. what you're right. saying. Right. I see. Yeah, it's okay. We disagree. All right. Um. Also, what else? What else? you know, reading this, I just, you know, again, see, I've read it so many times, but reading this, yo, I see the gospel in so many levels. Like, especially starting from chapter one, you know, where, you know, um, the men, you know, Jonah being a typology of Christ. You know, the way I, the way I, when I read it again, I'm like, Jonah being a typology of Christ. To me, I look at the sea and like the storm is sin. You know, like when he was on that boat, it was like all these men was on that boat. And the first thing they do, they try to throw off the cargo to lighten up the ship. You understand what I'm saying? But that didn't appease the storm. That didn't appease God to stop this storm. And it was like Jonah, you know, he presented himself, whether it was to, you know, because he he didn't want to see the Ninevites, you know, uh, you know, he'd rather die than preach to the Ninevites or whether it was, yo, to stop the storm, whatever the reason was. The, the typology I seen was, you know, the works of those men, cargo, whatever they gave to the sea, it wasn't going to stop the storm. It had to be a blood sacrifice. Like, the, like, it had to be a person to get thrown into that water to stop the storm. You understand what I'm saying? And I'm looking at it like the storm was sin. You know, Christ had to be that sacrifice. Like, no matter what, the bulls, the bulls and the calves were in, you know... Uh, uh, couldn't wipe away that sin. Couldn't appease God. It had to be a human being, and it's like it's like the, however the story worked out for on on Jonah's side, whatever the reason it was. But I'm looking at it as a typology where you know Jonah getting thrown into the water, it stopped the storm. So it was a person that had to get thrown in. It was like it had to be a blood sacrifice. The cargo wasn't gonna thing it, you know, right. stop the storm, and that's how I look at it. So everybody born into this world. From the lineage of Adam, has a storm resting on top of their That's head. Right. The wrath of God. And and the wrath of God. and what's even crazy is how I look at Jonah is as a first Adam and a second Adam, a like Adam. a last Adam. You know what I mean? It's like because of one man's disobedience, everybody was gonna die on that ship. You understand what I'm saying? But right. once he sacrificed himself, everybody survived. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And just to the point of that. And then, as like I, I mentioned before, you know, he gets thrown into the water. You know, he appeased, like, you know, Christ, you know, he died for our sins. And him spending three days in the, in the, in the grave, same way Jonah spent three days into the belly. Right. Then you get to the point of him being vomited up. That is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Then he goes to all Your nations. Nation. Because he was he resurrected, now all nations will be saved. saved. Mm-hmm. That means mm-hmm. it was appeased. You know, the, the, the wrath of God was appeased and all nations were saved. But just the typologies of Jesus Christ, not just like, and this is why, like, when you said that, I was just like you in the beginning where I was like, I only saw it with the three days in the belly of the well. But then when I'm reading it again, I'm like, nah, bro, from that point of, and the crazy thing about it is when Jonah was like, throw me into the ocean, the men said, no, there's another way. 
they they was like, we're gonna do it with our works. We're gonna roll, we're gonna roll, we're gonna roll, we're gonna roll. And the storm, sin is still here. Sin, yo, the storm is still happening. It's not until they was like, all right, we gotta throw them over. And what hit even more is what Ralph said, where he was like, yo, don't put the innocent blood on us. But Jonah wasn't innocent. Amen. So that's what made me see that even that point was a typology of Jesus Christ. It's just not in the belly of the world, but there were so many instances I think the Holy Spirit was... Because when you asked that question, that made... Yo, it, it, it rocked me when you was like, yo, why he didn't just jump off? You know what I mean? And I was like, yo, word. You was like, why he didn't just pray? <laughs> and I'm like, yo, you right. That would have... You know, that made so much sense, but I think it happened that way so that us... Looking back, right. would see the cross. To see the cross. To see the cross. To see all the typologies. The same. Jesus to Jonah. see Jesus and Jonah. And the story of Jonah. Right. The story same, of Jonah. Same thing with Ruth. You know That's what I mean? Right. Ruth could have happened any other way, yeah. but it happened that way. And it's crazy. We said the same thing with Ruth. Like the Lord just let me. I'm gonna pull out your story. You know what I mean? And I'm gonna mm -hmm. put it in the book because it all is supposed to always center to the cross. The Old right. Testament is supposed to look forward. The New Testament is supposed to, you know what I mean? It's right. supposed to be there, and we're supposed to look back. So that's how I see Jonah. I'm like, nice. Jonah, it wasn't just the three days in the fish. It was, nah, it was more than that. It was from when he got on that boat and just, you know, him being disobedient, being Adam. You know, Adam, like, like Paul said, because of one man's sin, everybody had to suffer. Mm -hmm. That's what happened with Jonah. He got on that boat. He was being disobedient. Mm -hmm. He got called out. All right, how are we going to appease it? Throw me over. Nah, we ain't going to throw works. Man try to do works. Different religions. Different religions. Muslims, yeah, we're going to get ourselves Hinduism. to God. Nope. It's not going to stop the storm. The only way the storm is going to stop is by our blood sacrifice. Somebody nah, got to get thrown you know, over. When you, you can make croissants if you stretch the dough. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I said no. <laughs> Yo, man. No, no, no. No, <laughs> the, no what you're saying is actually true because, and I think that's an exercise that everybody should do. When you read it, right. look for Christ. In particular, what Christ was referenced was the three days. Yes. Yes, yes. For that. Yes. Mm -hmm. But the typologies that you guys are bringing out and seeing the overarching message of God right. from the beginning, it's it's like a treasure hunt in every book yeah. to see how it fits. And, I, you know, we mentioned it like these guys didn't realize what they were doing or what they were saying at the time and how it would play out. So the Lord is able to take these stories and show continually that's the same constant story all the time. So, yeah. totally agree. Yeah. So the, the 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 statement that Christ made was for the three days. Yes. But yes, the book of Jonah, the gospel story is in there. Jesus Christ is in there. All right. Can you see it? Right. Can you detect it? And the points that you brought out, like I said, it doesn't have to be one for one. Right. But it has the same arch. You're right. like, oh, this is right. Same pattern. Same the patterns. Same pattern yeah. throughout all the books. All right, where's Jesus in this book? Where's Jesus in Ruth? Right. Oh, is this this? They didn't know what they were right, their right, right. acts and their decisions would create this story arch of redemption, Jesus yeah. Christ. So yeah, no, nah, I totally agree. And I yeah. and, and that's what it is. So, it's like this story has so much more, but I think the way the spirit writes it is he, yeah. All the details that's given is the details necessary to point to the cross. That's right. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's the that's the whole message of the Bible. It's always to point to the cross. And it's like um, Chuck Missler kind of trained yeah. my mind to be yeah. like that. <laughs> Just listening to a lot of Chuck Missler, he's yeah. always like, yo, yeah, there's always the code. coding in there. This thing is supernatural. This The author is God, B. The author ain't no regular man. This is God who understands everything, who sees all, who's everywhere. And he wants to share that with you. But you got to dig in a little deeper. Go ahead, Ange. Just real quick. I, I don't mean to bring it all up again, but verse 8 in chapter 2 where it talks about those who regard worthless idols forsake their own mercy. And we said that his worthless idol was what? His hatred of... His patriotism. Yeah. So you don't think that that verse tells us that his heart was changed toward that? No, he's talking about the Gentiles. Yeah, he's talking about the Gentiles. He was being, verse eight, he's he's being a much, hypocrite. He's pretty much saying, he is, this is like this spiritual pride. That right. Because he he's saying those, um, those who cling to vain idols leave behind. He's like, those people, 
they don't know you like like I, like know, I know you. you. Yeah. So you should, it, it but is almost this high minded. That, that those that doesn't in- encompass everyone, including him. No, nah, right. I don't know about the Gentiles. Yeah, the Gentiles. You don't you but we talked about that worthless idol being his patriotism. Yeah, I mean we, we see no. that. But he doesn't see that in himself. You don't yeah. think he sees that. Hey, nah. Nah. No. That's why okay. that's why we we were we were looking <laughs> so at the four clears all Yeah, because the see thing that, is, I, we were that's why okay. we point the reason we pointed out, Anz, is because we like, dog, you a hypocrite. Because you're sitting there looking at the Gentiles like, yo, look at them, they they worshiping their idols. Look at my God, he saved me from the sea. That's right. how he's talking to God, right. like, yo, you saved me from death. The seaweeds was wrapped around my head. Yo, yo, God, you're so gracious. That's why I don't believe in idols. I believe in you. Right. We see, like, well, your patriotism Dude. was high. <laughs> you know? It was a, it was a toxic, unhealthy. Yeah, B. Yeah. Because in chapter four, it comes out. This was the... Lord, I'm glad I'm not like these other people. Right, <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah, yeah. The, the Pharisee, the Pharisee, the Pharisee, Pharisee right? That's, that's the Pharisee prayer. That jumped out over here. That's <laughs> why you be like, yo, man, you, you got a lot of work to do, Jonah. <laughs> Word up, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Okay. I'm not like these wicked pagan. Right. Who said that in the New Testament. Somebody. It was the Pharisee and the, the Pharisee. That prayer. Yeah. That was like a little hint of that okay, spiritual okay. pride that he has. And I mean, I mean, he wasn't wrong. Like it was that was the prayer he's supposed to pray. But us the knowing heart, him, the heart made it wrong, right? So. Because we know his heart has been exposed to us later and four. Yeah. We know, like, well, you gonna say something like that <laughs> when deep down inside that patriotism is your idol. You refuse, even mm-hmm. though you saw, you know, like you said, half a million people get saved. You still like yo? I don't agree with it. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing, that like the yo, our hearts getting aligned with God. I think that's what Jonah is about. Yeah, you know, yes, you could be, you could do stuff in obedience. You could be obedient to what He's telling you to do, but is your heart aligned? Are you sincere and wanting to see people saved? Because, like you say, Ange, if you have the heart, it's gonna be way more fruitful. You understand what I'm saying? Like, a good, like, like, even I was telling Ralph, I was like, I think that's why the Lord was like, "Yo, I'm gonna give you eight, bo- I'm gonna give you eight words, B. <laughs> so you can't, cause I know how you feel. I'm not gonna give you this whole long because if I give you the halfway through the message, you might be, nah, man, I ain't gonna. You just run again. You start, you take off all your clothes and you run into the ocean again. <laughs> so I'm gonna make it real simple. <laughs> He did the bare minimum, dog. That's why God gave him the bare minimum. Words. <laughs> he probably walked through it was like 40 days. It was like 40 days what? He was probably mumbling. He was like, what? He probably whispered it. What? Because we're joking. And I'm just like, I'm going to chill with Jonah. Yo, look. It says, <laughs> look, 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 look. It says, yet 40 days, comma. I think he started with yet 40 days. <laughs> they probably was like, 40 days what? And you he probably see, was you like, probably, you see. and Nineveh shall be overthrown, man. And it was. <laughs> I think they had to ask him. He probably was like, 40 days, 40 days. He was like, 40 days what? <laughs> what are you 40 days in me? Nineveh's going to be overthrown, all right, man? And then it was. <laughs> Yo, none of us gonna be saying yeah, huh? what? what? Yo, what's gonna happen? <laughs> this sounds like it's important. We come over here looking pale. <laughs> this must be important. We can't hear you. We can't hear you. <laughs> Speak <laughs> up. We're <laughs> a blowhorn. <laughs> and you know what it is? Because I'm gonna show you something. Yo, son, that's how apologies is. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> huh? <laughs> what are you saying? Is it important? <laughs> are you okay? You look sick. <laughs> what, are you, what are you saying? And so you're like, I'm sorry, man. Damn. What are you sorry for? And, and then the person will go, But what are you sorry for? Well, what are you sorry for? What are you apologizing then, for? I'm sorry, okay? Take it, take it or leave it. <laughs> <laughs> what are you sorry? I'm sorry, man. Damn. <laughs> That's how apologies happen. Nah. So don't tr- trust me. He wasn't going in there heralding it at first. You know, what I, mean? I but, think he, you know he probably had to build up. We cracking jokes, but to me, what stands out is the Lord honored it. And, and what's the scripture that says the Lord require? He doesn't require oh, sacrifice. Obedience. Oh, That's why I said what I said. He, like yo, give me obedience. Samuel fifteen. And you don't have to have all of it together right. yourself. Right. Yeah. Give me obedience and be at in a place where I can deal with you. And we right. saw he did that. Even afterwards, yeah. this guy went, set up his um, set up his his chair 
to look to see what was going to happen. But right. you already saw the effects of the people. But like, it's almost like you're looking, hoping that they would reject it. Yeah. But you was there, and the Lord got a chance to deal with you. So that's that's actually something that you know was jumped out at me. That I was like, oh, I didn't see that before, and that's even better. Like, Lord, you know, you deal with somebody that don't agree with you, yeah. and you want them to come to a place so that you could deal with them, so that they could get because you're wrong. Yes. Yeah. God is always right. Yes. And He's like, all right, you, at least you're over here. Let's have this conversation. Let's sit down. Let's reason. Let's reason. Let so us reason. So you could align your heart to mine. Yes. And th- you know what? And that's one of the things that I do appreciate with Jonah is the, is his straight up honesty. Yes. And that's the thing is that majority of people are not honest. He was honest enough to tell God. He's like, I know you. Yes. Because you're passionate. You're loving. You're merciful. And I know you would, you know, uh, um, give them, grant them repentance. So you see, that's show- he was showing his heart that, yo, I hate these guys. And like, and he was being totally honest and transparent with the Lord, and allowing the Lord to deal with him, you know. And that's one of the biggest problems is that when people can't come to Christ, is because they will not be honest with themselves and be honest with God, and just come and just lay it bare and just lay it on the table. Yes, I am a sinner. I messed up, you know. And I need for so Johnny was completely honest. Nah, that's you know? that. Yeah, like I said, that's what I. You know, and I said that to you. I was like, there's not one point he wasn't honest. He was off. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> but he was honest all the way through. And I think God, he welcomes that. You understand right. what I'm saying? Because God is real. And that's what made me like even love this book even more. It showed who God was. That fourth chapter, I think I lo- I'm in love with that chapter. Because it, it's always about having this intimacy with God. Yeah, because I'm always having those. Because I have those Jonah battles where I gotta work it out with him. Like, why did you want me to do that? Why do you want me to? You know what I mean? Like, Lord, explain it to me. You know what I mean? And you have this fight with the obedience. And God is so merciful. He's so loving that he he entertains that because that's what he always. That's what he created you for. That's what he always wanted. You know what I'm saying? And that's what heaven is gonna be. It's going to be this. There's no more barrier. It's face to face. Like what Moses shared with him. Like even when Moses, when Moses was like, you want to wipe out the nation of Israel? You got to kill me too. You know what I mean? And I'm like, how dare you, Moses? Spare them. Right. Right. And he was like, in my mind, I'm like, Moses, how dare you? Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know what I mean? This is God. But God is like, nah, man, this is, you know, he'll deal with that. You know? So the crazy thing is, it's like, I'm, I'm. Seeing this jump out at me and it, it blows my mind, right? Where you have somebody that's a man of God, um, he's disobedient and the Lord still deal with him. But we read in the scriptures, just seeing the consistent, consistency of God and like he never changed and he's the same. Mm. But we read in the strip, scriptures where it says, while we were yet sinners. Right. Mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. It's like yeah, while yeah. we were his enemies, Enemy. he still did the greatest thing for us mm. by sacrificing his right. life right so then it's kind of like oh n- now this makes sense mm-hmm. like you was for me you did everything for me while i was your enemy mm-hmm. it's still consistent mm-hmm. that now that i am your son even though there are things that are wrong with me there are things that are in line there are things that i need to get right. straight you're still gonna have those pa- that patience mm-hmm. that you know what i'm saying you gotta still have that grace towards me, so I could get it right. I just mm. have to be in that place of obedience. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Because you do it when I was in the place of the, right. disobedience, <laughs> disobedience, wrath, right. and da da da. So I'm looking at that. I'm like, oh yeah, you're consistent. God is the same. Right. You know what I'm saying? Which is just reassuring. So if you're consistent, that means your promises are consistent. Your mm-hmm. promises are the same. So that's why we could walk around with the joy of. The Lord in our mm-hmm. hearts, knowing that we have a future, we have a hope, you know, we have eternity. And it's like, it, I, I, the way I'm looking at it is like obedience. You could get, you could get a, you could get that conversation, man, like he got in four. Because disobedience, you're going to get the storm, <laughs> you're going to get thrown in the sea, you're going <laughs> to get a, get a <laughs> fish. And it's like what you, you know, you, you, and says it like, yo, you know, you're going through. All that stuff. Like, you got to go through all this stuff, but that's God still trying to get your attention. 
Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But it could it could have been an easier way. Like he could have, like four could have been done in one, <laughs> mm-hmm. and you could have avoided the mm-hmm. sea. You could have avoided the well. You could have avoided. Everything. So you could have still did it, right? And not agree. And not. And you would have right. skipped two right. and three. Two and three. And then get to the four. But you fleed, like you, you said. You didn't want to wanna deal with it. You know what I mean? You didn't want to deal with him because you wanted what you wanted. But if you would have went, yo, God, I know how you are. Boom, 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 boom. You could have had this dialogue from when he first told you to go arise. You know? I tell myself that all the time. All the time. I see things, I'm like, you know what? God is good. Mm. (laughs) (laughs) I don't get it. Right, right, right. But you're good. That's what it is. So whatever you say, whatever you do, whatever you command is good. Yeah. I'm the problem. That, yo, that changed right. that changed my attitude. And I'm and I could do it and what I'm getting from this, I think that the biggest thing I'm getting for this is like you could still be a problem and I'm talking about the internal, whether it's your heart, your mind, mm-hmm. your thoughts, your feelings and still take steps of faith and obedience. Yes. So I could be in the room with my face scrunched up. <laughs> I'm in the room though. Right. I'm not going to yeah. run out. And cast the trains to the next, to the next town to try to get away. Nah, stay in the room. Yo, be lemon face in the room. Yo, at least the Lord could come be like, yo, man, what's wrong? <laughs> Why are you angry? Why are you angry? And yo. deal with you. But yo. if you're not in the room, he's gonna be like, ah. yo, yo, he's gonna say wind. Go get him. <laughs> you don't want the wind to come get you. Yo, you know, you know, yo, you know who it, you know wind who I remind me of. Mm-hmm. Um, wind will knock you down. Yo, you know what I remind me of. I used to, when George first came to church, I used to be like that with George. Like, George used to come to church, and he used to just have this countenance, like, <laughs> like he was hard, you know? But George was there every yeah. week. Yeah. And that's the one thing I used to always commend about him and love about him, like, because I knew he was struggling with things. Like, you could just see it on his countenance, but he was there. He was right. like, yo, dog, I'm dead. Even to the point where he got baptized. I remember when he got baptized. He was like, you want to say nothing? He's like, nah, I don't say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and I, everybody was waiting for it. You know, everybody says this, all this long thing. George was like, nah, I'm going to do this. That's it. <laughs> Dunked him, got up, walked out. And I was just like, <laughs> you ain't got no glorifying. But when I see George now, I'm like, yo, be soft. soft. But I saw this man consistently... Even though I might be in these, yeah. I might be a rough man in these hard places. Now when I see George, yo, he he beelines towards me. I beeline towards him, and it's like. But before when he first came, it was kind of like I used to be like, "Does this guy even like me?" You know what I mean? Like, yo, what's wrong with you? You know? But I watched him just be obedient, and the Lord worked on him to now where George is. You know, he's a big teddy bear now, and he's I'm actually like, a greeter at the church now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <You see? laughs> Yeah, they got him handed out like, "Hey, good morning." Right, George used to come in and sit. Yeah, there. you know how George sits. George used to. Yeah. Yeah. I never knew if he was awake or not. Right <laughs> up. I used to just sit there, but he was just so obedient to just being around God's people. Right, he knew that's what he had to do. Where it's crazy, like you said, I didn't even know George is a greeter yeah, now. He's a greeter. Yeah. He would be the last person you would think that would. But he's Change, a he's man. a testament yeah. of obedience. Just continue to be obedient. So be- what I'm getting is. Doug, it's inevitable. Inevitable change is inevitable when you actively remain obediently keeping the presence of God. Right, it'll come. It might the take presence, longer right. than others. Right, it's not for us to judge a person's, <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, you know, cadence and and. But it's gonna happen, dog. You'll be. That's where he screwed up. Yo, it, and then it hit me so hard. He left. He left. Yo. <laughs> Yo, B. Yo, B, once you leave, the Lord is like, yo, where you at? Where you at? I can't <laughs> deal with you. Yo, B, it reminds me of he Adam. Will, dog, he will prepare right. elements and animals to come get you. Yo, mm. soon as Adam messed up, mm. he, yo, B, you, you nailed it. it. And you know, when, when I read it, because I knew he, did, he left because he didn't want to preach to the Ninevites. But in chapter one, it says he just flee from the presence of God. And God is like, I'm going to do all of this just to get you back in my pre- We'll We'll start this again. And then in first three, he goes, arise, go to, we'll start again. 
I, that's where I left you. Right. <laughs> where you when come back, back? I'm gonna be right here waiting for you. And I'm gonna give you the same command. And, and I'm, I'm gonna give you the same. Let's continue. Let's continue. You know when you pause, you watching the thing. You pause, and you pause. <laughs> and you come back. It says resume. The Lord was like, all right. Let's resume. He was like storm, <laughs> sea, Man. seaweed, you know, well. And that's the thing. You don't want the Lord. To that's prepare. a commercial break, B. He will prepare <laughs> things for you. And you think the fish care? <laughs> The fish is not thinking about what he eat. Oh, I'm about to go swallow this guy. He right, don't care right, about right. what he eats. You think the wind? They're obedient. They're obedient to the Lord. The Lord's like, yo, go get this guy. All right. You're right. You don't want that. Yeah, B. Listen. <laughs> Stay the in Lord, the presence, The Lord B. is more gracious than the wind. Yes. That's, I then mean, the those sea. Are great points. Yeah, right. dog. <laughs> That's, yo, now I understand when he fleed from and the presence of God. That's what we're saying he dumbed out about. He could escape the escape presence the of presence. God. Like he was like, "Yo, I was stupid for even thinking." To no, I mean, leave I see yeah. it. That's obvious in yeah. there, but yeah, you um, know, nah, dog. dog that's what it was. That's and if he had <laughs> stayed in the presence, I think he would have yeah. got. Yo, go he would have got chapter four. I don't care if you mad. Do what I say. Yeah, yeah. I'll he give you the understanding after, and that's how a lot of times we just live our lives. We just right. have to be obedient, and later on, the Lord might give us if He choose. The understanding behind it, or the mm. wisdom behind it, or the capacity right. behind it, but just be obedient. And the great thing is, he's the one that sees it. Like he could see the internal, he could see our hearts, mm. he could see our motives. Like you can't see it, we can't see it. But the most important thing is, though, I know you're a work in progress. I know you're broken. I know where you came from. Right. Right. I know exactly you know, what's going on. Just stay just... going in that this one direction. Everything was going to eventually work out towards the end. So you think animals attack is the Lord getting somebody's attention? <laughs> Sometimes. <it's laughs> but but you know what I'm saying? Stupid people. <laughs> Do you want to bother the alliance? <laughs> yeah. Just on a, on a temporal on a temporal level, um, where we see uh, like where this takes place, where people can have faith and trust in things that's not dealing with God, and they don't question. Like you, how I mentioned, like yo, just be obedient. You don't need to understand. Right. God gives you a command, you just just follow it, and then maybe He'll give you to understand later. You may ten years down, like yo, that's why He sent me there. Because right. like when you look at it, how many people drive cars? Everybody drive cars. You don't understand how the car really functions. You don't know how the pistons and the, how the gas runs through the engine. You may understand it, but not everybody does. Right. Same thing, you you know, flying on a plane. You know, okay, it goes up, lift, what thrust, whatever, but you don't understand the inner working of the plane, but you get on and you trust that it's going to bring you to your destination. Right. And all these things that we see temporally, we just trust and do, but when it comes to God, yo, t t no, why? Why Why should I go? Yeah. Why should I do this? Yeah. And you start questioning everything, you know, and you don't trust him, the one who loves you the most and cares for you, you get in the car, the car might crash, it might fall apart, it might break down, but we'd rather trust the car before we trust God. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, the one one thing I see here too, the last thing is, and I don't think it's a coincidence that we did this book, but the same way that the, the, the stench of the wickedness of Nineveh was uh, uh, arose to the Lord, I feel like that wickedness here in the United States of America is also raising up. Mm. And mm -hmm. just think as Christians how the Lord used someone who was reluctantly obedient can you imagine how he, he would use you, you know, if you had a genuine desire um, to be obedient to him and, 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 and faithful in getting the word of God out there? And we 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 as Christians need to do better. Um, we got to get that word out there and, and just pray for that revival. You yes. know, uh, can you imagine being in the midst of a revival? Right. And, and how our hearts would leap with joy, knowing that all of these people, all of our friends, loved ones, family members, you know, have given their hearts to the Lord. So the stench is rising. We look everywhere, social media. It doesn't matter where we look. The wickedness in America is at an all time high and we can be that light, man. So I, I just beg my, my brothers and sisters in Christ, get out there and, and start being obedient. And I, I like I don't know if I mentioned it, but I think the revival, I think the Lord's heart is revival because we see it in Jonah. Like he, his heart is that none should perish, and I think we're close to revival. That's how I personally feel. But um, I think we have to be prepared. <clears throat> revival is not gonna look like how you think it's gonna look. 
You know what I mean? Like, the Lord is always wanting to do something new. We're in a new time. We're in a new generation. So I think revival is going to look different because you have a lot of Christians who are set in their ways because they were raised a certain way or they've seen things a certain way or they've read books and they think this is how revival is supposed to look. I don't think revival is going to look the same, especially with <clears throat> social media, technology. You know what I mean? I think revival can happen very quick. We see how fast a hashtag could spread. You know, one hashtag, I've seen one hashtag turn the whole country upside down. One hashtag. You understand what I'm saying? So mm. a, a ha it could yeah. be as simple as a hashtag <clears throat> on Twitter and social media, Facebook and all of that, where revival will hit. And you'll see people just confessing Jesus Christ. It might not be in the streets. It might not be in your churches. It might be on YouTube. It might be on Instagram, it might be on Twitter, it might be on TikTok, it might be on these, that's why these social media platforms, and the, and the Holy Spirit could take it over. Mm -hmm. You know, he could take over it, and he don't need it for long, because like I said, that hashtag, it, it, it hit, it happened real quick, couple months, and it was over. You know what I'm saying? So revival, you know, think people thinking this is the 1800s where revival got to last uh, 20 years, or 15 years, or even 10 years. Revival could, could come in and out in six months. You know what I mean? And the thing about it is, are you going to be sensitive to it happening? Are you going to be in your own world? Because that's what the internet allows us to do. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Be in your own world and kind of be separate. And you don't like something that somebody's saying, I'm going to block everybody. And you block everybody and you create this own little space for yourself and right. you'll miss the whole thing. So as believers, we have to be sensitive <laughs> to what we're seeing, what's going on. And I think this, this revival could come in and out. A couple hashtags. You see some YouTube videos, you see some prominent people start getting saved, they start spreading the message, boom, 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 and the Lord may like, yeah, this is it. And you don't even know, you know, half a million people get saved. And Lord, feel free to use Known Part. I mean, that's why we it's do it. It's at Known Part. <laughs> <laughs> at Known Part Podcast, Lord, feel free to use it. There'll be three people yes. going to get saved from Known Part, B. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's three parties in heaven. And Lord. Lord, may the Lord use one of them. That's three parades in heaven. <laughs> you gonna see some somebody gonna do one little TikTok kind of, yo revival, big revival, and no part was like five hours. Yo Jonah, <laughs> <laughs> you get you get to the B, man, you be like yo three people. That's what y'all got from so from Kip. Oh okay, <laughs> I'll take it. you be like this. I'll take it. <laughs> All right, but man. God is good, man. Any other any other thoughts? Oh. No, I'm good. good. Yeah, this was a fun season. I'm showing it, what's it up. It always exceeds like whenever we start these books, it always exceeds Expectation. my expectations <laughs> of what the Lord is gonna reveal. Like yeah. half the stuff like we kind of spoke about and went through, though it was like just brand new stuff. Brand like new, learning yeah. in real time, totally separate from the personal study time or the personal mm. time with God reading. Yes. So, right. Like this is like, you know, it's like you get it three other folds. Like you get yeah, it that's, and, that's and why you we love and it. you it's like, oh I got three folds. <clears throat> it's wild dude. and it happens all the time. Sometimes I'm like, ah, it's only four chapters, as long as seventeen verses. Ah, this is gonna be light. Yeah, right. right. And the Lord is like, a word? <laughs> <laughs> Holy Spirit is like, ah, oh, did you see this? <laughs> Nah, and it's like, oh, snap. Yeah, I think Ralph said it. He was like, yeah, Jonah's my new favorite book. And he says, I says about, he says, I said that about every book we read. <laughs> and it's, um, yeah, and, and Pastor Julius used to say that. Like, somebody told me, he said that. He was like, yo, what's your favorite book in the Bible? He said, the one I'm reading at the time. Yeah. You know? And, I, and I'm there. Yeah. It don't matter where I'm at. Like, even right now, my personal time, I'm going through Jeremiah and Exodus, and it's like, ah. Oh. So much is coming at me, you know what I mean? And it's like, oh, this might be my favorite book, but it's just because it's the word of God. That's, and, a, that's what know, it that's is. the reason we like our hearts is just to encourage people to read the book because it does, just like you brought up with you know the example of George, and it does something, to it does you. something to you, and it's hard to explain. Like, we could put it into words and theology, but you just have to experience it for yourself and just yeah. get into it. and 
Yeah, there's no way you could sit in the presence of God and you don't get changed. Something's, something <laughs> Something's gonna happen. It's yeah. going to happen or to something. you. Guaranteed. <laughs> yep. Revelation. Guaranteed. Things, things, <laughs> things get revealed to you. Yeah. Yeah, B. That's what God is all about, revealing himself to you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, oh, that was good. All right, man. So. Heavenly Father, Lord, we're just so grateful for another opportunity to come together as a group, uh, Lord, and to, to read your word, to dissect it, to to hear from you, and we pray that those who listen to these episodes, Lord, that they would also be blessed. We pray, Lord, that you would instill within them a, just uh, a passion to to dive into your word in the morning, in the evening, Lord. Um, may you use them to create a revival in their homes, in their workplaces, Lord, and um, not until we step into eternity will we understand you know, exactly what we're doing here, Lord, but we pray that you would just continue to allow us to do it. Um, continue to provide the resources, Lord, continue to to lead us um, in this ministry, Lord. So we're grateful for you. We're grateful for allowing us this platform. Mm-hmm. So bless it, and we bless your name. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 And um, the only way that you could be saved and not spend eternity in hell is by believing in Jesus Christ. Word. That's the only way to salvation. Believe, baby. So believe in Jesus Christ. Amen.